All right, it's time to read the Hobgoblin Lair. Interesting little video I found on YouTube of that. Let's, um, actually, I guess we can make it nice and quiet. No, it's not, that's not going to work. Let me, let me get some background music. <laughs> All right, that's nicer. Um, hopefully I can have that just play in the background while we, while I read, uh, Cave E, the Hobgoblins, Cave, sorry, Cave F, Cave E was the ogre. Uh, interesting um, pictures of hobgoblins, but hobgoblins will always be this for me. Those are the hobgoblins from the first edition Monster Manual. One plus one hit die. Uh, I would give them a damage bonus. I mean, one to eight or by weapon type. Six and a half feet tall. I made them six feet, four inches. Uh, well, I, I can explain that right now. Um, according to the Monster Manual, Knowles are seven feet, and so are bugbears. And I thought, nah, gnolls shouldn't be as big as bugbears. So I made hobgoblins six four, gnolls six eight, and bugbears seven feet. That was just my minor little adjustment to it. So here is the uh, cave F. It's a very bizarre cave. First of all, we've got the guards over here in 26. I'm just gonna go over this really quickly. It's a little far from the cave, honestly. It, they, there will be a problem with the, there's a door here, and so they could hear noise, but I would think that it should be over here. It should be closer. But regardless, the first um, room is all the way down over here, and this is where hobgoblins are live. This is a group of, of hobgoblins, a family. This is the uh, torture chamber here where the prisoners are. Um, and then this is the huge hall of hobgoblins where they're preparing a feast. And then this is the armory. So you think, well, that's it. 3, 24, 25, 26, 27. And then there's a secret door. And up here you can see there's a secret door. This is the, gob this is the goblin lair, and there's a secret door going over here. So all of this is hidden by through secret doors, which means if the party doesn't find them, and... and there's, it depends on how big the party is, the likelihood of them finding it. If, if four people are going adventuring here, they could they could miss it. It's possible, but very unlikely if six or seven people, and if they have henchmen, someone's going to find these secret doors. But I find it odd that the hobgoblin leader is behind a series of secret doors. And I, the other thing that's weird is this is room 27. 28 is this room over here. This is a storage room. And it's connected to the Hobgoblin leader and his guards, this whole series of rooms here. So why wouldn't this be uh, 30, 31? So 28, 29, and 30 would be here, and this would be 31. Makes more sense to me. I'm not sure why he numbered it the way he did. Um, but I will be reading from my module, and this is the PDF. They are not exactly the same, pretty much for the most part, but there might be a, a couple little um, things. I'm just going to read it as it says in the module. So if you see something that doesn't line up, you know why. I'll try to remember to scroll down. We're going to be reading all the way down there. And then this page, we'll be reading both um, both columns all the way down to there, to the DM note. So it's a, a little longer of a read. So uh, this is going to take a, a little longer to do. Um, here are, let me get to my Hobgoblin information. Um, what I've written here is the hobgoblins like living here. They feel very safe and powerful here. The bugbears are on the other side of the ravine, of the ravine, and the gnolls don't bother them. So they see the more power. So they see the more powerful creatures here as protection for them from possible future threats from elsewhere. Since the clerics assured them the stronger creatures will not attack them, but rather protect them from enemies. Hence, why they feel safe here and like it here. Now, the um, the Hobgoblin in Gary's modules, in this module, they will have around five hit points. And I find it odd that, uh, this is my other my other thing about these monsters, uh, kobolds and goblins have three or four hit points, Hobgoblins have five, orcs have four. There's really not much difference between them. 
And I've already shown you my upgraded versions as I've upgraded um, first level uh, characters with starting minimum hit points as well. So I did that for these guys too. So my hobgoblins are now considered, I consider them a, a level two monster with 11 hit points on average. They do D8 plus one with a sword or a short bow long bow, so D6, D8, six feet, four inches. I've given them a 15 strength, which for me is a, a plus one damage bonus. And every other stat is pretty normal. And then the female hobgoblins are level one. They have six hit points. I could make that maybe seven. Um, and they use a club usually, and they're six feet tall. And there's the, there are their stats. And then you have the, the typical treasure that they will carry. So a male hobgoblin for, for this module, if I'm running it, will carry D12 minus three copper. So zero to nine copper and zero to uh, three silver pieces. Females will carry zero to six copper pieces. So the hobgoblins tend to have some silver pieces, which is gold pieces in a typical campaign. Remember, I use a, a silver standard. So decent money here. Um, okay, let's start right at the beginning, and then I'll just add, I'll just read what I've added, the small little details. Gary's again fleshes this out very nicely. So I'll just start reading here, and we'll we'll see um, how this all how this all sounds. Hobgoblin lair. Cave F. Seldom are there fierce creatures troubled by marauders. For the entrance, so seldom are these fierce creatures troubled by marauders. For the entrance to their lair is guarded by a stout barred door at the back of the entry cave. Skulls are lined along the walls and several are affixed to the oaken door to highlight a warning written in common runes. Come in, we'd like to have you for dinner. Which then in parentheses, which, oh, you, you can see it, of course, which could be misinterpreted as a cordial invitation to dine. Careful inspection of the barred door has a one in six chance per person examining it of detecting a secret mechanism, which allows a person outside to slide the bar back so the portal can be entered. If it is forced open, it will require three ones on a D6 to indicate the bar has been broken open and the noise will alert Area 26. If a knock spell is used to open the door, the noise of the falling bar will be heard, but guards will not have time to react, so the intruders will have two rounds of time before the guards will come. Okay, that's interesting. I would give rogues um, a better chance of uh, working out this secret mechanism, um, I would think, but that's just me. I don't think I said anything else regarding that the barred door yes i did if the barred door is open the guards from 26 will move to the angled hallway while one alerts area 27 so let's just go there the angled hallway here so they'll move here waiting to see if somebody comes in um three will fire their crossbows and then back into room 26 while continuing to fire if possible. The other three will hide around the corner by the door to room 27. If the party moves into 26 to attack them, the other three will attack from the rear. So they're trying to, to surround them. While the others from room 27 and beyond will join after. So if, if the party comes in here to seize them and attacks, Others will be hiding back here, and they'll come up and then try to attack from behind. Uh, the hobgoblins here will also come, of course. So you're talking of a very dangerous situation right off the bat. And with my hobgoblins, uh, did I, I? I went over the. Um, yeah, they're they're doing D8 plus one. There's there's no um, poor quality weapons here. So these are significantly tougher than orcs and, and goblins. All right, what did I want to do next? I want to go and just read 23. Common room. This place quarters five males. Dex 10, AC 6, hit die 1 plus 1, hit points 5 each. Number of attacks 1, D damage 1 to 8, with D4 times 10 silver pieces each. Eight females, dex 12, AC 7, hit die 1, hit points 4 each, attacks 1, damage 1 to 6. I won't read those again unless they're different. 
I'll just skip over them, with 2d6 silver pieces each, and three young which do not fight and have no treasure. There are heaps of cloth and skins for beds, some odds and ends of furniture, a small barrel of beer, buckets, etc. It are in the place, all worthless. The males are watching the east door, which communicates with the goblin lair, D, above, and are battle ready. So where he says odds and ends of furniture, I decided, well, let's say what the odds and ends are. Um, room description. Two tables with benches are on the north wall, along with two barrels, two small barrels, beer and water. There are a couple of buckets here as well. They're empty. And two crates with some iron rations, salted meat, vegetables, and cheese. The tables have the usual food and mugs. The beer tastes pretty good. There is a shelf in the southwest corner, which contains the following. Just a something to add. Um, four copper pieces, several rocks, cards, a couple of dead mice, some hard cheese, a small belt pouch, which is partially torn and badly stained, a knife, and some cloth worth one silver piece. So I'm going very mundane here, but I'm trying to just make it a little bit different, so it's something that stands out. Combat strategy, the young do not flee unless the others do. If the battle turns against them, they all flee down the western passage, screaming as they go. They will flee east down the stairs if that's their only option. One or two will run to area 26 to alert the guards, while the others flee to 25. They, there they will plan an attack at the T-intersection to the east. So going back to the cave, so this all took place here, so they will run back this way. And 25, the T-intersection is here, this is a good place because if you have hobgoblins over here and these hobgoblins are alerted, they'll be here. And then you can also have hobgoblins come up if a battle should start right here. So that's very dangerous for obvious reasons. All right, let's go back and let's read the torture chamber slash playroom <laughs> slash food storage. Okay, then. I, I like that description. There are two very large, ugly hobgoblins here. Each is equal to a 2 plus 1 hit dice monster and having 10 hit points, the other 8 hit points, and both wear chainmail, armor class 5. One also has a whip as well as a sword so that he can strike at opponents up to 15 feet distance. And if a hit is scored, the whip will jerk the victim off his or her feet and stun him or her for 1 to 2 melee rounds. However, once closely engaged, the hobgoblin cannot make use of his whip, so he will cast it aside. Each of these monsters has a purse with D6 each copper, silver, and electrum pieces. The larger also has a silver armlet worth 135 gold pieces. I don't know what a silver armlet is, but that seems quite expensive for something that doesn't Seemed, wouldn't seem to be worth that much to me, but I, I really don't know what, the, what a silver armlet is. They, they guard six prisoners who are chained to the walls. There are two chairs, a small table, a central fire pit, and various implements of torture in the chamber. The keys to the prisoners' chains are hanging on the wall in the southeast corner. And then we're going to go through the prisoners. Uh, I see where it's at here. Okay. The prisoners are, number one, a plump, half-dead merchant scheduled to be eaten tonight in a special banquet. If he is rescued and returned to the keep, the guild will pay a 100 gold piece reward, grant the rescuers honorary guild status, and exempt them for one year from any fees, dues, taxes. I've never had players pay taxes. Have any of you done that where they've had to pay taxes? Because it seems very awkward in how, exactly how you do it. Fees for guild membership and stuff, sure, you could do that. Uh, fees, dues, taxes, and the like, which the guild would normally collect. All right, let's go down here. We go to area, or prisoner number two, an orc. Dex 10, AC 7, hit die 1, hit points 4, who will fight goblins and hobgoblins gladly. If handed a weapon, of course, of course he will seek to escape from the adventurers at first chance taking whatever he can with him and informing his fellows at B above of what happened. Number three, a man at arms. Dex 12, AC 9, level 0, hit points 5, 
who formerly served as a guard for the merchant. He will take service with rescuers for one year if an offer is made for room and board only, if armor, if armor, if given armor and weapons. I think he'd want a little bit of money too. I'm, I'm not doing that for free, but you know, okay. Um, number four, a normal female, the merchant's wife, in fact, who is also slated for the big feast. She will personally reward her rescuers by giving them a plus one magic dagger she has in her room back at the keep. Now see, this is really good. This is just great stuff for, for um, role playing. Um, Number five, a crazy knoll. Okay, we've got that on there. Yes. Uh, a crazy knoll, dex nine, AC nine, due to, due to no armor, hit die two, hit points nine, who will snatch up a weapon and attack his rescuers if he is freed. He will cause only one to six points of damage due to his weakened condition. Number six, another man-at-arms, as number three above who will behave the same way his companion will. So that's all good. I don't think I added too much here. The torture chamber. Oh, yes, I, I do include some implements of torture. In the southwest section is a table with two chairs and two beds and cloth and hides. Food and two mugs are on the table. There is a shelf nearby with a small barrel of beer, some bread and cheese, and a small crate holds food rations, salted meat, etc. There are some crude shelves on the north wall that contain various objects that appear to be used for torture. Some have dried blood on them. There's a knife, a pair of tongs, crude-looking pliers, sharpened sticks, candles and torches with flint and steel, iron spikes, broken pieces of glass, etc. That's just what I came up with. So I've got them with 14 hit points, and I call them level 3 monsters, since I consider Hobgoblins to be level 2. Um, they do plus 2 on damage, because their strength is a 16, and they're 6 feet 7 inches. So they're 3 inches taller than your typical goblin, and of course the whip. And they carry more money than the typical Hobgoblin, I'm sorry, Hobgoblin, the typical Hobgoblin carries. So they have more copper, more silver, and the, the silver armlet, I decided, was only worth 25 silver pieces. I don't know. It doesn't really matter too much. It's not a game a, a game unbalancing thing by any by any means. All right, so the other thing is there's only two of them. This shouldn't be too hard for a party to take to to defeat. There's only there's only two, but if they were to run and join in a battle, that's now you're now you're <laughs> think, things are getting bad. All right, let's go back to um where we're going to go here, which is 25, which is the big feasting area. All right. Area 25, common chamber. This large place is used for meals, meetings, and general revels of the hobgoblin tribe. And that's another thing. You can do that. You can. It doesn't have to be the way it is. You can change this and put lots of people here, including the chieftain. If they're having a big feast in the night, in the evening, have everybody here. And then the party better not go. They better like, oh no, let's not go in there. That, that that's you're talking. They better run at that point. There are many tables and benches set out now, as the place is being readied for the coming feast. Four males, same stats. Uh, five females, basically the same stats, and nine young who will not fight are working here. So the females fight. So that's they should. I think they should. Um, males have d4 gold pieces each. Females, 2d6 silver pieces. Um, the head table. Uh, the head table has a set of pewter dishes on it, and their value is 25 gold pieces for the set. Okay, that, that's that's good. Um, I don't think I changed anything. I've, I've got some stuff. Yeah, the, the table, there's barrels, so beer, you know, the uh, sacks, the crates, um, what's in the crates, what's the boxes. And I've said how their living quarters have all been moved up against the north and south walls. In the eastern section, there's only bedding and a couple of shelves with the usual stuff on it. In the northeast corner are two barrels, along with two buckets. Just more mundane items to fill in. Um, the, I left all of that the same. I didn't even need to include that. Next to the head table, oh yeah, I also added, is a cask of excellent wine that was stolen from a caravan. It's worth 25 silver pieces. Combat strategy. The hobgoblins from area 23 might be here as well. If the party enters quietly, roll for surprise. If they have 
time to prepare for battle, all the males present will split into two groups. No more than four will move past the T-intersection and hide in the hallway in the darkness there. If This is assuming that they know the party's coming. So they're going to, again, that's where they're going to go over here. All right. Um, if they have no missile weapons, they will use rocks. Four will be at the bend in the hallway to the west and will fire missiles or rocks. The rest will be behind them and will fire missiles or throw rocks if they can. Otherwise, they will move up and melee when there's an opening. The females will be to the north and south of the entrance and attack there. So they're going to be in here hiding on the north area and the, on the south. So if the party comes in and they're alerted, that's where they'll be. Otherwise, everybody's over here. This is where everyone is unless they're alerted. They're all eating on tables here and feasting. So you, you have to change this based on what's, what's going on. Um, or they will run up in melee as well. If the battle turns against them, they will attempt to flee or they'll surrender if they're unable to flee. Again, they don't want to die. Of course not. Why would they? All right, number 26, the guard room. Six hobgoblins. Um, now he's giving them six hit points here. Uh, three with heavy crossbows, which they'll fire once before dropping and taking their maces for close combat. And let's go back and just look here. So 26. Well, that's just that. That's the guard room. I'm sorry. I didn't need to go back there. Um, you know where that is. Each carries D4 each gold, silver, and copper pieces. If they hear the door being battered at the or the bar falling, all but one will immediately rush to the entry while the other will alert area 27 and then join his fellows. It takes two rounds for them to reach the entry and the sixth will join the other guards on round four. Did I add anything? Um, I said they they don't watch the entrance very well. Why would they? They're guards, they're, they're lazy. So roll for surprise if the party approaches quietly. Their coins are all on the table. In the center of the room is a table with two benches with mugs and food. Six pallets line the west wall. Along, so that's their beds. Along the east wall is an empty bucket, a barrel of beer, a crate of food, and a small sack with some bread and cheese. Cards are on the table as well, along with all the coins, 52 copper pieces and 11 silver pieces. So that's all I did for that. Then we have the crazy armory. Three hobgoblin guards, um, armor class five due to large shields, and they have six hit points as well. So some have five, some have six. Are on duty here at all times. If warning comes, two will move to the door to wait in ambush, and the other will pass through the secret entrance to area 31 to alert the chief. Each guard has two D4 each of silver and electrum pieces. In the chamber are the following... One suit of man-sized plate mail, one suit of dwarf-sized plate mail, three suits of man-sized chain mail, two suits of elf-sized chain mail, seven suits of man-sized leather armor, eleven shields, six daggers, one axe, four maces, three swords, two short bows, one long bow, eleven light crossbows, two heavy crossbows, eleven score of arrows, fourteen arrows have silver heads, nine score of bolts, fifty-one spears, nineteen pole arms, forty-two helmets of various sizes, armor type items are standing or hung from racks. Weapons are in chests or on pegs or in racks. I had forgotten that they did give that information. Let me bring go back up here. Um, it says right there, are hung from racks. Weapons are in chests or pegs. So I basically just listed all that and said, here's what's on the, the east wall. There's racks there. Then you've got the south wall holding this. Then you've got the west wall. So I, I just, I divided them up. And then there's a barrel that holds 19 pole arms and, and the 51, so six barrels. That's all. That, didn't have to do anything else with this. Um, two guards will move. Yeah, this is all pretty much the same. This is this is done just as, as he said. I, th I think it's perfectly uh, fine area. Des described well, I mean. The description is good. I, I liked it. I didn't see any need to change too much there. All right, uh, area 28. So this is the storeroom, which is above the where the leader is. Um, goods stolen from the stupid goblins are kept here until needed above. There will be a single guard, dex 15, <laughs> AC 6, 
um, five hit points, blah, blah, on duty here at all times. He has two D8 Electrum pieces. If the, par if the looting party does not encounter adventurers, um, if the looting party does not, oh, the party of hobgoblins, does not encounter adventurers in Area 21, they will also, they will also be here. The four hobgoblins, and there's their stats. Each of the four carries D4 gold pieces. I don't think I added anything there. No. There's there's no reason. I said storeroom here. That's that, that's fine. All right, let's go to 29, the guard room. Two hobgoblin guards, and again, for the map's sake, we're talking right here. So no one's going to be in here unless they found that secret door, which they, in case they come in this way, which could be interesting. But you've just got these guys at the top of the stairs in their little room, and the, the leader is here. And this is another room where guards are. And this, I believe, is his, his bedroom. He's a 10 by 10 bedroom. Isn't that nice? Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing with doors on either side. It's very, it's very oddly drawn. But I kind of like it. All right. 28. Make sure I'm... Oh, no. I already had it all set up. I'm sorry. There we go. All right. The goods... Um, 29. Sorry, two <laughs> guard room. <laughs> All right, I'm getting a little disorganized here. Two hobgoblin guards uh, with light crossbows and swords stand here. There's their stats. With them are two females who will fight, and they have four hit points. Um, males have 2d6 each, silver and copper pieces. Females have no treasure. There are two cots, a bench, a stool, and a large box filled with soiled clothing in the in the room. If attackers are seen, one female will alert area 30, the other will alert 31, then both will fight. So again, 29, no nothing to add. He gave all the nice details of all the stuff and basically gave you the combat strategy, which is makes perfect sense. So the Hobgoblin Chieftain's Room, um, Hobgoblin Chief's Quarters. This great, ugly creature is particularly tough. Fighting as a 3 plus 1 hit die monster, armor class 2, due to his plate armor and shield, so that's already really hard to hit. For, for a first level party, That's you don't want a first level party doing this. You want them to be at least second level when they fight at Hobgoblins. And adding plus 1 to damage from his hits. Dex, 15, because I don't look at whatever, AC 2, hit die 3 plus 1, hit points 17, 1 attack, doing 2 to 9 points of damage. Okay. He has 5 platinum and 31 gold pieces in his purse. That makes sense. He wears a silver and gem studded belt, values 600 gold pieces. With him are 4 large female hobgoblins, each equal to a male. They have 6 hit points, and you see their stats, and each has... 2d6 gold pieces. The room is crowded with furniture and junk, all of no real worth, except there is a false bottom in a huge iron box filled with mangy animal skins. That's a great treasure chest. Underneath, you easily could miss it. The secret portion of the iron box holds 25 platinum, 200 gold, 115 electrum, and 400 silver pieces, plus a 100 gold piece gem and a potion of poison, and this is why we stopped bothering with 400 silver, because why would you bother with it? It's 20, that's 20 gold. You, you might, it's, it's still 20 gold, that's a lot of coins to carry. Um, amidst a heap of kindling wood near the fireplace, southeast corner, there is concealed a wand of paralyzation, but it has only 17 charges left in it. Now, that's a, a great magic item to find, but it is hidden. Um, it's it, it's mixed. It's disguised with the kindling, with the wood. So it, it's it's kind of neat the way he did it. I I, I kind of like it. Um, what I said here now, this I called him. I referred to uh, the hobgoblin chief as Gragnock. He's a huge, ugly hobgoblin who has no equal. All fear him and respect him greatly. And then you've got the ha uh, his females with him. Uh, the same stuff. Uh, it's filled with the foodstuffs from twenty eight. On the north wall is a huge iron box. There's shelves on the north wall, north and east walls that contain clothing and junk. There's a fireplace half, with a half-eaten roasted boar in it. Why not? 
Um, the 10 by 10 room, because nothing is talked about about this 10 by 10 room. So I just said it's the, the sleeping quarters for the chief and his four mates. Or did I read that and completely miss it? Well, maybe I did, regardless. Um, it's filled with hides, pelts, cloth, and cushions. The hobgoblin chief will not flee nor surrender. If he dies, the rest of the hobgoblins will attempt to flee the area, grabbing what they can if there's time. His females, and that's just my decision that he won't flee. He's just going to fight to the death because he couldn't live with losing, basically. He'd be humiliated. Um, his females will keep others from flanking him or making rear attacks against him, so they will fight on his to either side of him, protecting him. Um, now, I made him a level 4 monster with 22 hit points. Very powerful man, a hobgoblin man. Uh, I made him seven feet tall. He's got an 18 strength, so he gets plus three damage. Um, a 16 constitution to help add to, to justify those hit points. And he wears plate and shield, of course. And there's the four females with their stats. And for me, with my silver standard, he gets 38 silver and six gold. He wears a silver and gem studded belt worth just 100 silver pieces. I lowered that. And the females carry that. Um, the mangy pelts, basically this is all the same. Um, nothing different. And two bone life, two bone tubes hidden underneath the long forgot. Okay, so we got a wizard scroll with those spells. So I took out the the wand of paralyzation, I guess. Um, and then I put a curse scroll. Whoever looks at it will start reading it and begin chanting arcane words that make no sense to anyone. Any who don't immediately run will take damage as it then explodes in a 10-foot radius blast, doing 3d4 points to all within, no save, but the reader takes 12 points of damage. Those near the edge can save for half and save again for no damage. So that's pretty deadly. If it's too deadly, get rid. don't, don't bother with it if you don't like it. It's just a, an idea, something that I did differently. And then the guard room... I didn't really have much here, and I, I just put the little mundane items, and I planned a possible attack by the goblins when they're outside, and they're going up the ravine, they're climbing up, and the cop goblins would come down and attack them with higher ground. All right, so let's read the guard room, real simple, and the DM note. Four hobgoblins, uh, each with 2d6 electrum, silver, and copper pieces. They are alert for danger, and when notified, they will pass the word to areas 29, 30, and or 27 as required. The room is rather bare, having only two pallets, a stool, and a large water barrel. DM note, as usual, hobgoblin losses cannot be replaced during the course of normal play, which is a period of only several days or weeks of action. The hobgoblins are fairly smart. Okay, well organized. I don't think I had them being very, fairly smart, but maybe I should. Um, well organized and alert. If their chief is killed, they will typically seek to escape alive unless their opponents are obviously weak and inferior. Survivors will reinforce the goblins at D above unless their attackers are very dangerous and the hobgoblins can see that the whole cave's area is in trouble. So that's the hobgoblin lair. Um, it, it's just an interesting place with the secret doors and, and the long corridors that you have to walk through to get... I mean, look how far you have to walk to get to 23. That's really long. And, and if you go this way, you're going to run into those guys. But you really want to run into these guys. You want to get rid of them. It's, and you, you rescue the prisoners. There's a lot of potential for um, great role play here with the prisoners, um, with rewards. Uh, this is this is dangerous. Obviously, the chieftain's dangerous. This whole place is so difficult. If if you have six people playing, I would tell them they should hire as many people as they can to help them. Even as many as six more. And they all just play two characters. Just play your play your hireling or henchman. Because there's just so much here and it, it's very easy to get killed. Now, granted Gary's Hobgoblins only have five hit points, which is only one more hit point than an orc, one or two more than a goblin or a kobold. So there really isn't much difference between these monsters, which I think isn't um, isn't realistic. Now, my kobolds have four hit points on average, my goblins six, my orcs eight, 
my hobgoblins 11. So it's only a two hit point difference until you get to the hobgoblins and then it's a three hit point bump. That still isn't a lot, but it's but 11 hit point hobgoblin is a lot harder to deal with than a five hit point hobgoblin. And I'm making them level two monsters, so their, their attack is going to be one better. This is... Uh, Dangerous regardless, but the, the the party is more powerful than, you know, nobody in my party has less than four hit points, and all the fighters have at least seven. So, and I'll show you those stats that I made, including all the stats for the chiefs, once I finish going through everything here. Um, I don't think there's anything else I wanted to talk about. I would love to talk about what happened when you went through this as a player and a DM. Uh, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love for you all to give a listen to my story, Foresteras Fate. It's in a playlist. Just click on the introductory video. There's book one and book two. It's D&D in story form. If you want to feel like you're reading a story that makes you feel like you're playing D&D, give it a listen and, and see what you want. You, you can buy the book if you want. It's on Amazon, but you don't have to. Uh, you can read it for free on my blog. So it's, uh, it's all there for you. Um, it's all a blank screen. Uh, except for the first, the introductory video. Uh, book two is most, all, all has visuals. Um, just, just I just added them for fun. Nothing, no pictures, just um, video images of stuff. It's kind of neat. I made a couple videos in, in it too. Uh, I did some different things in, in book two. But I think you'll enjoy listening to it. I, I think you'd enjoy reading it. And I would love to chat with all of you in the comments about D&D, um, anything else? If you guys are into uh, prog rock, I'm a big Yes fan, King Crimson, stuff like that. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.